hello beloved welcome back again um, to Linda Peace your sister in Christ and, um, today I do not have a word that I have I've, I've written down that I'm going to read for you from the Lord I don't have the word but uh, I have I have come to speak what is on the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ right now you know um, I hope I hope you are you uh, getting to know God uh, so much uh, deeper than you were before I hope you striving to, to grow yourself in, in things of God. I hope you're doing that. I hope that you are setting aside that thing that you have been treasuring in, in life so much, the things that you've been putting your trust in. I hope you're trying to set these things aside. Not even trying, but striving, you know. Because what the Lord what, what is on the heart of the Lord right now? Nobody would want to listen. Nobody would want to hear this. Nobody would even want to see. You know, because this thing is coming for the whole world. You know, and nobody can stand. Nobody can stand the decision that can be made by the Father, by the Father in the hour, by the Father in the hour. I hope, I hope that you are trying to set your family aside. I hope that you're trying to set your job aside. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. I hope that you're trying, you're striving, you're trying to show to God that truly the decision that you made on that day, that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my Lord. I try, I, I, I hope that you're trying to prove that. I hope that you understand. I hope that you are understanding. You are understanding. You are understanding. But the Lord says they are not even. They are not. I hope that you are trying to, you are trying to know who Jesus is as for you yourself. I hope, I hope that you are setting your eyes on Jesus Christ. He says they are not even, they are not. I hope you understand when he says that for I am the good shepherd. He says they don't understand. And they have made me little. And they have made me small. Do you understand? When the Lord says, I am who I am. God is not a man. He is not a man. You cannot compare him to anything of this world. God is not a man. When he says something, he does not lie. When he says to you, none of those that are unclean will enter my kingdom, will enter the new Jerusalem. He doesn't lie. He never lies. Because he knows, he knows what he's talking about. Because it's the finish of all, the beginning and the end. Do you know where God comes from? Do you know? Or do you know where he's going? Do you know that? I do not know. And if anybody says that I know where God comes from, they are lying to themselves. But then why don't you then listen to what his command is saying out of his, what he says in his word? 
Because if he is who he is, if he is who he is, then he is who he is. Because he's the author of all things, of all things, then listen to him because he's the one with authority, with authority to everything. You know, he says, I have tried to reach them, to bring them back to me, but they have not listened. They have not acknowledged. They even do not want to know more about me. They have set their eyes on the men of this world that are preaching to them the gospel they want to hear. Not the gospel that I preached from the Father. They do not understand that when I went in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, it was for their sake. They don't understand that. Guys, the Lord is angry. The Lord is angry in this very hour. He is very angry. Very, very angry. You're going to ask me, how do I know? How did I know that God, God is angry? The Lord is angry. That's not a question you have to ask me, but ask yourself. Can you hear from God? Do you know God can speak? What do you take God for? That if you have eyes, you can see. What do you think he cannot see? Where did you get those eyes from? That you have a mouth, you can speak, you can speak, you can speak. Where did you get that mouth from? If you have ears, you can hear. You can hear. Each and every word that people say. And it, the decision is in your hands whether you do it or you don't do it. Whether you go there or you don't go there. Do you think the one that gave you those ears cannot hear? If you have a heart, you got feelings. You get hurt by people when they walk away from you. When something bad happens to you, then you have, you have feelings. You are hurt. You feel sad. Sometimes you are happy. Because something good has happened in your life. You are happy. You are sad. Because something bad has happened that you do not want to see even. You even don't want to be there because you don't like it. What do you tell God for? That he also doesn't have feelings? That God doesn't have feelings? Okay, let's not think, let's not talk about the name God. And then now let's talk about the person that whom everything is coming from. Look around, look around the whole world. Look at the seas, look at the mountains, look at the sky, look at the earth, look at the people. Where are these people coming from? Where do all these things, these things, all of these things, you say you don't want to hear the word God, you don't want to hear the word Jesus Christ. Okay, where do all these things come from? Let's send them. Whomsoever all these things come from, whatever the name is, have you gotten to know this person? Have you gotten to fear this person? This person? Have you gotten to thank this person of whom he is? Have you set your eyes on this person? Have you gotten to understand this person as you yourself, not as you sitting in the church, people preaching to you, you looking at your husband, your wife, your children, treasuring them, your job, your finances, your riches, your wealth, your wealth, your wealth, your wealth. You see, all things are working out for you. Everything is okay and you do not want to, to acknowledge Jesus, guys. You do not want to set time aside for the Lord Jesus to read the Bible, to focus, to focus on God, to focus on God. To focus on God. To focus 
Jesus, when are you going to focus on God and forget your problem? Your problem. Forgetting your problem. Don't you know that all things come from God? All things come from God. All things come from God. Is there any problem you can solve? Is there any problem you can solve? Then do solve it. You solve it yourself. Solve it yourself. And then solve yourself at the same time. Guys, the Lord is angry. As I was worshiping, I felt the Lord in my heart. I felt the heart of the Lord. The Lord is angry. And he, he was speaking to me in my spirit. He was speaking a lot of things. How you how people are focusing on the leaders, on, on the on the your pastors, on your prophets. And you have forgotten that he, they were not there when he was on the cross, when he was nailed on the cross. It was only him. Those people weren't there. Please understand God. Understand the Lord Jesus. Understand. Why can't you understand what is too hard for you to understand? Understand that he has feelings, that he loves you. He loves those that love him. He wants a person that will come and sit and talk to him. Sit, sit and say, my friend, my father, my brother, my sister, my, my mother, I thank you for the things that you've done for me. Now look how the world is. Look, my business is like, my family is like this. Okay, let me set this aside, but let me just worship you for creating me. I want to thank you for creating me for the things I see around this. And what is it too hard for you to do to just two, two hours, just one hour, just 30 minutes, just 20 minutes, sit and talk to Jesus. What is wrong? Sit and talk to Jesus. Why don't you forget about your finances, how life is going well for you? Why can't you seek holiness and righteousness? And he says to you, I don't want you to be an adulterous person to smoke, to drink, to associate with those people. I am the good friend. Sit with me. Do you want friends? I'm the good friend. Sit and talk to me. Let's talk. Let's talk. You have a mouth. You can talk. I can also talk. Let's talk. You have ears. You can hear. You are talking. I can hear you. Now let me also speak and you hear me. What is, what is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? What is hard? Huh? You wear those pants? You wear those mini skirts? You wear those high heel shoes like you go, you, you, you go into a club? You say you are going to the house of God. You're just following those people. Those people say we give you healing. We give you healing. We give you success now. You are healed. They heal you. But at the same time, because they are, they, are, they, are, they are liars, another disease comes in you so that you can keep on coming to them, coming to them. Problem after problem, problem after problem. Do you know what the Lord is saying? Do you know what God is going to do now? The Lord is releasing. He's releasing disaster. On the whole land. On the whole land. What a pity. What a pity. For the land. What a pity. It's going to be very difficult. Very, very difficult. He's releasing disaster because he's angry. And he's angry, very angry, very angry, very angry. Disaster to everybody, even the leaders. Disaster everywhere, disaster everywhere, everywhere. Disaster is coming. Everywhere it is coming. Because why? You have failed, you have failed to run to Jesus when he say, come to me. You have failed. You put your trust, you tr your trust in your in your wealth, in your money. The time you sp you're supposed to spend with Jesus Christ, you're spending. 
in your job. Computers, he says computers, computers, phones, phones, he says TVs. The time is supposed to spend with Jesus Christ, you're spending with your partners. You come from your work. You say to the Lord, I'm too exhausted. You just lay down. <laughs> I'm too exhausted. But yet he's been waiting for you the whole day. He's been waiting for you the whole day. Just the way you get disappointed in your heart. Just the way you get disappointed in your heart. It's the same way. Jesus gets disappointed in his heart. You have to know. The way you wait for your girlfriend when she's going for work or your wife or your husband. When they're going away, you wait for them and you miss them. That is the same way Jesus waits for us to come to him and talk to him. He missed you the whole day. He missed you the whole day. And he understands you were occupied that side, but now you have come. Now you have come. It's time for me and you. It's time for me and you. Don't set these things before God. Don't treasure your families. Don't treasure your finances. All these things fade away. They all fade away. Understand that it is Satan. It's Satan that comes to us through these things. He lies to you. He lies to you. He occupies you. He says you are tired now. Now sleep. You are tired. Go and see your family when you're done and you can come and talk to, 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 to the Lord. When you're going, your time is gone. By the time you come back, it's another story. Story after story. Story after story. Don't do that to God. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. God is not a person you can play with. He's not a person you should play with. Okay? He's not a person you should play with. And for this, he is going to strip through the land. He's going to strip through the land. Do not trust in people, but trust in God. Anything you want to know, he has already said it in his word. Read your Bible. Read the Bible. Read the word of your father. It's already there. Read anything you want to know. Anything. How you have to live your life. How you have to overcome problems in your life. Has somebody upset you? Read. Read the Bible. You will see. It is written there. How you have to overcome this. Are you facing a problem at your workplace? Read. You will see how to deal with that. You are, are you mixing, mixing, uh, mixing while alcohol, you're dealing in winery and things of that, like that. And you don't know how to deal with it. It's written. Find it there. You will see. Everything is there. Above all, acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Okay? He's a good person. He's a good person. He will tell you everything. Build your relationship with Jesus Christ. Close your door. Be in the secret with the Lord Jesus. You can have that relationship with Jesus Christ. The same way you build a relationship with your closest friends. The way you started that relationship with your closest friends. Just flash back and look how did you start your relationship with your closest friends. Even your partners. How did you build that relationship? Now you know one another. Now you eat in the same plate. Now you like the same things. That is it with the Lord Jesus. Okay? Build that relationship like that. Don't listen to those leaders. Many people are following these false prophets. Many people are following other preachers. But I tell you, the true church of God is not out there. It's not. I promise you this. The true children of God are not out there. They are not. And it is hard to identify them. Because they are hated by the world. They walk quietly. 
They walk quietly. They are hidden. Not even the angels know the true children of God. Not even the 24 elders know the true children of God. But they are yet to be revealed. Only God knows his true children. But are you the true child of God? Are you? Would you want to be that true child of God? The one that will inherit the kingdom of God? Then you're going to have to sit down and listen to God. You're going to have to set aside. You're going to have to take away all the excuses in your life. All of them. Out. You don't, you don't need to have excuses in you in order to be a true child of God. No, you don't have to have excuses. No, be humble. Be very humble. Always have less to say. Take, take, take the least position. For now, what I can say to you, whatsoever church you are going to, that is not inspired by the Spirit of God, get out of that. If you see women dressing indecently, just know. Just know, that is not the church of God. That is not. And another thing you have to know, there are churches that are preaching that you have to dress modestly. But they are not telling you that you have to turn away from your sinful nature. Your inside is dirty. They are not rebuking you of this. You see? And there is a church that is also rebuking you of the inside, that you have to clean your inside. You don't have to... to, to uh, you, you, you have to live godly, uh, righteously. You have to clean your inside, take out the malice, the slander, the envy, all this, this, the inside sins. But they're not telling you of the outside. It's also not a true church. A true church of God, it governs everything. It governs everything. It governs everything. It touches everywhere, every part. It rebukes you of every part, everywhere. Encourages you to read your Bible, to fast, to pray, to fast, to pray, to repent, to repent, to repent. And whereby there is no church that are preaching these things. But they preach to you one thing, they're leaving the other thing aside. Set yourself aside. Set yourself aside. That's why he said that. For I am the, the, the good shepherd. He prophesied. Everything that you see in the Bible, he prophesied because he knows the time is coming. The time is coming where there will be many, many, many shepherds, many shepherds. But he says, I am the true shepherd. I am the good, the good, the good shepherd. Okay? A good shepherd will always give you both pasture, both food and water. And he will make sure that his, 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 uh, his sheep are sheltered in good, in shelter. You know, they're in shelter under the shed, but not in the sun, you see. But those bad shepherds, they will give their sheep <coughs> water or, or pasture and they leave them under the sun. You see? Because they are bad shepherds. They don't, they don't have feelings for the sheep. They don't care. Let them eat. As long as I've eaten and they've, they had water, it's now fine. They can live. But the sun is going to scorch you. The sun is going to scorch the sheep. And then maybe they fall sick. And then they be unhealthy. And sooner they, they die. You see? But he said, I am the good shepherd because he gives pasture. And he gives pasture. He gives water. He shelters his sheep. You see? And he checks on them. Which one is not okay? Which one is sick? And he treats. He treats. He treats. That's why I say to you, when you are sick, when you are sick, you don't need a person to lay hands on you. You don't need a person to lay hands on you. Because he is the good shepherd. And I testified to you, I said to you, when I, I fall sick, anything happens to me, whatever the pain is, whatever, whatsoever my body faces, anything, anything. Lord, here is the pain. 
I did like this and I did like that and this is the cause of this. Please take away this pain because I know my body is your temple. You live inside of me. It's gone. He lives inside of you. You have to understand that he lives inside of you. He dwells inside of you. Inside of you. You have to know. When you get to this full understanding that Jesus is your Lord and he is inside of you and you are one, sickness will never come close to you. No problem will ever come close to you. You, will, you, have, you have authority to command, to command any kind of problem out of your life, out of your family. Somebody tell you, your mother is sick, your father is sick, your brother is sick, your child is sick. Out. You just say that. Get out now. Get out. It's a demon. It's a spirit. Sickness is a name. Every knee shall bow before the name of the Lord and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Okay? Now understand your God. Understand your Jesus Christ. Understand your Lord. Come out of those churches. Do not set your focus on your family. Do not set your focus on your problem, on your children, on your work, on your businesses, on your companies. Don't set your, your focus on them. Don't set your focus on things of the world. Don't. But he wants you come. Come in your, in your secret, in your prayer closet. Close your door. Come. Take your Bible. Read. Read your Bible. Read to understand, okay? Relate everything that is happening around the whole world in the books of, of, in the, books of the prophecy. That's what he pleases him, to see that you are, you are treasuring, you know, you are following his prophecies. He wants that, you know? And anything you don't understand, ask him, ask, ask him, ask him. He wants you to set him in front of everything. Talk to him. Say, Lord, even now I read, I am not understanding. Don't give up. Pray. Pray over and over. If it's one prayer, say it over and over and over and over. If you don't know what to say, if you don't know what to pray about, you don't know what, just put on your, your music, your worship music. Not this, this gospel that sounds, uh, that sounds like the world. They say it's gospel, but it sounds like the world. The women now have makeup on. They have like this. They're like monkeys. They're like prostitutes at the same time, but they say they're singing. God. No, no, mm -mm. no, doesn't please God. That, that worship, that pure, that holy one is what pleases God. Let it come from your heart. If you don't have, if you, you don't want to listen, if you don't want to sing with those songs, if you don't want to use those songs to worship God, then sing from your heart. You have sung songs for your lovers before and they come from inside your heart. Do that. Do that to the Father. Sing for your Lord Jesus Christ. Let it come. Because Paul said that sing spiritual songs and, and, and hymns to the Lord Jesus Christ in your spirit. Okay? It can be any song. You can create a song on yourself. How precious you are. How you died for me on the cross. How you thought of me. You know, I didn't know you, but you knew me. You know, King of kings and Lord of lords. How you pay the price on the cross. How they came in that night and they said, we are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, but you said, I am he, come. You know, say to him, you were strong and courageous. You don't just easily give up. Say these things to him. He loves it. And for that, you will be saved of the wrath that he's sending out in the world, in the land. He is so angry. So angry that people say they are Christians, but they dress like the world. So angry that people say they are Christians, that they acknowledge him as his Lord, but they're following other people. When they go to church, they just pray there. And when they come back home, they're in, in, in slander, in marriage, in anger, fighting with this one, this one, and that, and that, and that, and that. What is that? Is that a Christianity person? Is that a person of, of, of Jesus Christ? No. It's not just to show to the people outside. But what you do in your secret is what determines you as a child of God. Is what determines you as a child of God. You know. Alright. 
Be good to the Lord. Be good to the Lord. I have told you already that he is going to release his wrath. But don't be shaken when you see these things happen. When you see distress on the people, everyone will be mourning. All this, all this, all this, even the rich, even the rich. They are going to receive the wrath of God. The plagues that you saw that are written in the Bible, they are going to be released out. The Lord is so angry. And out of this, many people who will run to the Lord. But there are those that will run to Him just to use Him. Because they want to get out of the problem. Woe unto those people. You rather stick to the Lord. You rather stick to the Lord until the end. He is doing this because He wants people to know that He is God so that they can repent. He's bringing distress that you can know that only He can take you out of that distress. Now it's up to you. Either you seek the Lord with all your heart or you remain the way you are. You don't seek the Lord halfway. One leg that side and the other leg this side. You have heard many preachings. The Lord has sent many people rebuking you of the things that you do, telling you of holiness, of righteousness, but you haven't you haven't exercised of what you have heard. And that also is grieving the Lord. He's grieving him. But for you that love the Lord with all your heart, don't worry. Because he will never let disaster fall on his children. He will never. Alright guys, I'll see you again. When the Lord wills, I will come back here again and release his word, his message to you. But please, you have heard my voice. And this voice is not my voice, but it's the voice of God. Like I said to you, I was worshipping. And all of a sudden, the Lord gave me his heart. And I felt what was on his heart. And I was so angry before his presence. I was so angry. And I started to say the words, the words that I've, I've been saying to you. And I felt how angry he was. Very angry. Very, very angry. Very angry. Even those leaders of yours, they are going to face distress. It doesn't matter at all whether they, 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 they reveal to people what distress they are going through, whether they hide it. It don't matter. But distress is coming to those leaders that are leading many people astray, that have failed to preach holiness to people. Complete holiness. Distress is coming. And nobody is going to like it. No one is going to like it. But as for you, you will hear rumors. This has happened here. This and this and that. You will just see. But you won't experience it. Many people are going to lose their riches. Many will lose their houses. Those expensive houses. They will. They will. Many people will lose. What their treasure in their lives. Whatsoever you're setting, you're, you're setting in front of you as something you treasure so much, you're going to lose it. You are going to lose it. Not until you acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as your true Savior, as your friend, as your true friend, and you make this come to pass that you know how a friend is. You've, you've, you've had closest friends before that anything that happens you run to these friends you have to prove this you don't say you don't just say it with your mouth Jesus is my friend Jesus is my father no but you prove it it should be in your secret in your prayer closet when you close your door it should be that you should come to that point where you feel the Lord how does he come it don't just happen overnight but you approach the Lord and he finds you halfway. You approach, if you understand that hell is fire and you don't want to be there for the rest of your life, you will run and build a relationship with the Son of God because he's the one that will hold your hand like this and take you to the Father. 
You see? Father, this one, I know him. This one, I know her. She's ours. He's ours. But if you stay quiet and you be just the way you are, you say, I'm a Christian. You will go to hell. Even Christians will go to hell. You'll be surprised. But it's all written in the Bible that not all that call me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my Father. You see? But he that, that, that will do the will of God. Meaning these people that are saying Lord, Lord, Lord are what? Are Christians. A Muslim can never call Jesus Lord. And other religions, other beliefs, they don't call Jesus Lord. But he says, Lord, Lord, those that will call me Lord, Lord, meaning these are Christians. You see? These are the ones that claim, I am a Christian, I'm a child of God. You are just a child of God. You are just a Christian. But you are not the heart of God. You are not the apple. You are not the... the, 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 the uh, you are not the apple of the eye of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be that person that the Lord is pleased in. I am not saying that there is anybody that's perfect. I'm not saying that. But your perfection, our perfection, comes from Jesus Christ. Your boosting should be in Jesus Christ. That one person, that one. You have to show him that what he came to do on the cross, what he came to do in this world, was not just pizza and ice cream. You don't just jump out and say words that you do not know. You don't just jump out and make decisions you don't know. Acknowledge him in every step that you do. Talk to him. Lord, I am planning that I may do this kind of thing, but I don't know if I will succeed or not. I don't know if you will bring success to me. We know that King David, King Solomon, and all the kings in the Bible Jehoshaphat, all of them, before they did anything, before they did anything, King Saul, before they did anything, they consulted the Lord. That is something that was so beautiful that I've ever read in my Bible, you know. Before they would go for a war, before they can do anything, they say, Lord, shall I go and attack Will you lead them? Will you give them into my hands? <laughs> you know? So it's like you just appearing there and then the thing will be given to you if the Lord pleases, you know? And then he says, go. Hey! <laughs> he says, go. I will give them into your hands. Go. He just says, one, just one word, you know? Just one word. Go. Just one word. Go, because I will do it. You know? He says go, but go like this. Because he knows his enemies are already like this. Now we say you also go like this. Hey! <laughs> that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our Lord, our God. That's what he does, okay? He directs you. He will never uh, let you fall into the hands of your uh, fowls. No, he will always be there with you. You know, so you have to ask and wait. You know, you have to have that. Whatsoever you ask, whatsoever you pray about, you have to know that there should be always an answer for you. He has heard and he will do it. You know, if, if at all it is aligning with his <laughs> word, if he pleases to do it, he will do it. You know, if it pleases him, he would do it. And if he sees it makes sense, he would do. You have to reason with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The Lord wants you back. Many of you, he has tried to bring you back to him, to reconcile you. Sometimes maybe the things that you are watching on the TV, 
you know you've spent most of the time you spend most of the time on on the phone on the tv you are listening to secular music what defines you what separates you what differentiates you from a worldly person and you a child of god if you are listening to the gospel of the world the people are swearing in that in, in those music the people are uh, uh, dancing like this you also watching what 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 differentiates you as a child of god from from the worldly people what you tell me what a person is rapping you are also uh, watching and you are also at the same time rapping what differentiates you from that worldly person a child of God is good. It, you will see them with the fruits of the Spirit. Where is your gentleness? You will be seen by the, fruit, the, by the fruits. Your gentleness. You'll be gentle in your spirit. You'll be gentle. You say, uh, that music, that music sounds way too, uh, well, too, too, uh, way too, uh, too loud. Too loud. It should be gentle should be gentle should be gentle okay um okay guys i'll see you again peace be upon you bye